just want to mention one quick thing, Morgan. When we were talking earlier about this violence, the clash with police and the, the violence that ensues, I do think one thing we need to do as citizens, as Americans, pay attention to your daily interactions with people because those will be a lot better than what you see on TV. Those are the outliers. So when you, when you base what the world is like on these stories and you don't give enough credence to what's happening when, when you meet certain people on the street, in business, you're doing a disservice to yourself. Well, definitely, definitely. And, you know, one of the things you notice about these protests and these riots, because and there, there we go again with the naming of them. Are they peaceful protests? Are they riots, et cetera? Well, I'd say anytime you're firebombing the police, it's a riot. But they're occurring in the cities, if you notice the pattern. They're occurring in the big cities. And it seems to be in the big cities where there's some of these, you know, dominant cultures of Marxism and communism. And I mean, that's been the case for 100 years, so it shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, it basically got its start in New York City. So, uh, you know, about 100 years ago or even more. So th- these things are not a surprise. But going on with some of the leadership also of the movement, I mean, I don't know if you've seen this lady, Susan Rosenberg, who's part of the Thousand Currents charity. But they are the charity that supposedly manages donations for the BLM groups. And there's a number of different affiliated groups that make up that that culture, uh, that movement. And uh, anyway, Susan Rosenberg, who's the vice chair of Thousand Currents Charity Program, is a convicted terrorist. And, of course, she was serving 50-something years in prison for— Bombings that she carried out in New York City and Washington, D.C. back in the early 80s as part of the Weather Underground groups, the March 19th or maybe May 19th uh, communist movement. You know, and they've got all these different names for their movements, but they're, they're all affiliated with each other fighting this revolutionary struggle. So she was blowing up government buildings and was apparently part potentially of the Brinks robbery where a Brinks guard and a police officer were shot and killed. Uh, this all happened back in the early 80s, uh, that this sort of, you know, attempt at communist revolution was going on at the time. And, of course, you know, Bill Clinton pardoned her. Why? I mean, who even knows, right? It doesn't make any sense, does it? Anyway, he pardoned her, and now she's out and about, and she's running the charity arm of the BLM movement. So you should look into that. Susan Rosenberg. And what's what's her role in this Marxist revolution that's going on in our country? And you've got guys like Joe Biden sneaking in little quotes of Mao Zedong, you know, the great leader, the founder of the Chinese Communist Party. You know, he's at a digital fundraiser with Valerie Jarrett. If you remember her from the Obama administration, kind of one of Obama's watchers, overlords, people who were very important in his administration. And Joe Biden says he was going to quote an old Chinese proverb. Well, it's not really an old Chinese proverb. It's a quote from Mao Zedong. But anyway, the quote was, women hold up half the sky. Now, you don't think that was intentionally slipped in there to show solidarity with the communist movement? I mean, I guarantee you, first of all, I guarantee you Biden didn't write any part of the speech that he's reading on the teleprompter. And I guarantee you that that was slipped in there by his advisors For purposes, that's a secret message to people like Susan Rosenberg. Hey, we're on your side. Hmm. Vote for Joe Biden, and uh, we'll keep this revolution moving. We'll move it in the right direction. Progress. We'll move it forward. Another aspect of this revolution is the control they've taken over some of our cultural institutions. And we won't have time to read all this to you, because it's. but you got to go out there and find it on your own. Now, they've taken this off the web now. The National Museum for African American History and Culture had a graphic up on their website that they've now removed, and they admit to it. It's on the website. They say, we took that down because basically it was generating too much controversy. And the graphic is talking about race, aspects and assumptions of whiteness and white culture in the United States. Now, I'm quoting now, white dominant culture or whiteness refers to the ways white people and their traditions, attitudes, and ways of life have been normalized over time and are now considered standard practices in the United States. And since white people still hold most of the institutional power in America, we've all internalized some aspects of white culture, including people of color. And then it goes through, and it's, it's like three pages of 
stuff that makes up what they say is this is what whiteness is, right? So things like self-reliance. Self-reliance is whiteness. Independence and autonomy are highly valued and rewarded. The nuclear family, a father, a mother, and 2.3 children is the ideal social unit. Objective, rational, linear thinking, that's white. Objective, rational, linear thinking, cause and effect relationships, quantitative emphasis, the scientific method. That's white thinking. According to this chart, and do you see what they're doing to us here? Do you see this? This is identity politics through and through. It's critical race theory. It's intersectionality. It's all of these Marxist thought processes and ways of describing the world that have sprung up and gained a foothold and basically taken over our academic institutions to where this is the only thing that's taught anymore in our academic institutions. And it's all about breaking people down and pitting them against each other based on the color of their skin. This is not getting beyond racism. This is diving headlong into racism of all kinds. Thank you, Nick Cannon. It's terrible what's going on with our country. But anyway, this is a national institution. I mean, they're affiliated with the Smithsonian. And they're putting stuff like this out. By the way, this graphic was written in 1990. Some of the other information, you go on their own website, they haven't taken everything down. Some of the other stuff they're linking to, talking about the troubles with whiteness. I read one other paper that was written in 1988. I mean, talk about some old information they're spreading here. You know, if these were problems... Back then, okay, that's one thing, but this is not the status of our country now. There's a lot more to read on that graphic. You really got to go out there and read it. The thing that struck me about self-reliance is just how silly it is to say that self-reliance is something that we all, people of all races, colors, creeds, nationalities, backgrounds, shouldn't be in favor of self-reliance. I mean, if we're all dependents, who are we dependent on? You better have some self-reliant people out there to produce something or the dependents aren't going to have anything to eat, as that happens in every communist country. The dependents don't have anything to eat. Thank you for listening to The Morgan Streetman Show. We hope you enjoyed what you heard, and if you did, please click like and subscribe to help us out. And remember that we recommend that you exercise your brain at least once a week.